I'm kind of bored. Let's do some math. Function operations. When we have more than one function, we can easily add, subtract, multiply, or divide, or compose them using function notation. One notation is f plus g of x, but you'll notice that that kind of looks like f plus g times x. No, that's not what it means. It actually means to take function f of x and add it to g of x, which we'll do in a little bit. Same idea with subtraction, multiplication. Notice the equivalent statement given f minus g of x and then f times g of x. We have f of x minus g of x, f of x times g of x. Division, you'll notice we have this f divided by g of x, but we often write it as f of x divided by g of x. So just for you to be aware of the two different notation systems we have when we are performing operations on functions. Last is composite functions, and it's different than multiplication because it has that open circle. So f of g of x, so it looks kind of like fog, it's not fog. And we prefer to write it in this method. You'll see that later in the lesson. When we perform operations on functions, it's important to consider the domain. When you are thinking about the domain, it is the most restrictive of both functions, or all of the functions if there's more than two. In addition, if it happens to be a polynomial, happiness, because polynomials have positive integer exponents, their graphs are always smooth, continuous curves, and therefore the domain is all reals, or negative infinity to infinity. So really, the restrictions that we want to be looking out for in this lesson, two things, okay? Just two things. Keep in mind that you cannot even root a negative number. That's going to cause us problems. We're in the real number system right now. So I can't take the fourth root of negative 81, I'll get an imaginary number, or the square root of negative nine, I'll get an imaginary number. The domain is restricted with even roots, zero and positive numbers. The other restriction that we'll see is the math commandment. Thou shalt not divide by zero. Divide by zero. Let's go ahead and put all of this together and practice. Miss Ryan? Awesome. So let's look at this with function f of x and g of x. f of x is going to be x squared minus 9, and g of x is going to be the square root of x plus 3. Well, let's determine those domains first. So the domain of f, well, x squared, that's a polynomial, so I know all real numbers. What about the domain of g? I have a square root, so that means I have to keep x positive, so x is greater than or equal to 0. So let's perform some operations on these functions. A, I have f plus g of x. Remember, that's not times x, so we could write it as f of x plus g of x. Okay, well, I'm just going to add those two functions together. x squared minus 9 for f of x plus square root of x plus 3. Well, now we can just combine like terms to simplify. So f plus g of x simplifies to x squared plus the square root of x minus 6. I could only combine one like term, that negative 9 and 3. So now we can list the domain the domain would be x is greater than or equal to zero or zero inclusive to infinity because that's the most restricted domain of our two functions. So in this next one, we have f minus g of x or f of x minus g of x. Now be careful here. If we're subtracting, we need to subtract all parts of g of x. So I'm gonna distribute that negative when I perform my subtraction. That leaves me with x squared minus nine minus root x minus three. So this simplifies down to x squared minus root x minus 12 with a domain of x is greater than or equal to zero again because that's my most restricted domain. Looking at c, I have f divided by g of x. So that's just f of x divided by g of x. x squared minus nine divided by square root of x plus three. Not much simplifying I could do here. I guess I could multiply by the conjugate to get rid of the radical in the denominator, but for our purposes, we can stop here, and now I'm going to state the domain. X is greater than or equal to zero, because that's my most restricted domain. Now, because our answer here has a denominator in it, thou shall not divide by... Zero! I can't divide by zero, so I need to make sure I check that that denominator can't equal zero. So square root of x plus three can't equal zero. Let me solve and make sure this won't happen. Subtract three from both sides. Square root of x can't equal negative three. Well... Square root of x literally can't equal negative three. Square roots are always positive, so I don't have to worry. No added restriction. This last one, D, give it a shot.
Okay, so I got square root of x plus 3 divided by x squared minus 9. Domain is x is greater than or equal to 0? What did I forget to do? I didn't check the denominator. Right here I have x squared minus 9 in my denominator, and I want to make sure that that never equals 0. So let's solve. Uh-oh, look at that. x squared minus 9 does equal 0 when x is positive or negative 3. So I need to add those restrictions into my domain. x is greater than or equal to 0 is already my domain, so I definitely need to restrict x can't equal 3. Do I also need to restrict x can't equal negative 3? That's already a restriction, right? If x is greater than or equal to 0, we've already excluded negative 3. Example 2. Let's state the domain for each of the functions. Both of them are polynomials. Remember, positive integer exponents. So domain, all reals, or we can say negative infinity to infinity. Go ahead and perform the operations and state the domain on each portion, a through e. only one of these that I think gets maybe a little interesting is on the division because thou shalt not divide by zero. We see on D that we have a restriction x cannot equal negative 5. When we checked E though, we end up with x squared equals negative 1 half. Well, no number squared equals a negative, so I can stop there. This would go into imaginary restrictions, but we're only looking for real number restrictions and there are none. Next, we're asked to evaluate f of negative 3. So let's write down f of x again. And at this point, what it means is we're replacing the input with negative 3. So I want to replace x with negative 3. There's a purpose to me highlighting that negative 3 and the input that we're going to do coming up. Let's evaluate. f of negative 3 equals 38. You do g. g of negative 5 equals 0. Miss Ryan's going to show you how this applies to composite functions. Composite functions, a composition of functions. Now we can notate this in two ways. f with that open circle g of x, so that means f of g of x, or we prefer this way because then we can clearly see which function is being inputted into the other function. So for functions f of x and g of x, a, we want to determine what f of g of x is. So immediately I rewrite it in the preferred form, f of g of x, and then let's look. The inside function is g of x. So that's 3x minus 3. Then I'm plugging it into the outside function, f. Well, remember, I plug into the x value. So the function g of x is now replacing the x. So f of g of x would be 3x minus 3, replacing that x, plus 4. So simplified, I'm going to get 3x plus 1. So for b, now I want to know what g of f of x is. I can see that f is the function I'm going to input for x. So I'm taking function f, x plus 4, and inputting it into function g where x is. When I do this, I get 3 times the quantity of x plus 4, which was the input function, minus 3. So g of f of x is 3x plus 9. All right, here we go. Now we have some new functions. f of x is now 4x squared plus x minus 2, a quadratic. Let's be careful. h of x is going to be x minus 5. This first problem, we have f of h of x. All right, so my input function is h of x. So I'm going to input x minus 5 into f of x where the x's are. Look, I have x in more than one place, so I'm going to input x minus 5 in both of those spots. Oh, boy. When we simplify this, we got to be so, so careful not to get ahead of ourselves. 4, x minus 5 squared. Don't be thinking about distributing that squared. Uh-uh, we gotta multiply this out. X minus five times X minus 
five. So as I simplify, I'm gonna take care of that x minus five times x minus five first, and then distribute the four after. Now that we've multiplied out, we can distribute the four to all three terms and combine like terms. I end up with 4x squared minus 39x plus 93. We did it. Looking at the next one, we have h of f of x. So if we write it in that preferred form, we can see that f of x is the input function. So that quadratic 4x squared plus x minus 2 is going to get input where x is. Why don't you see if you can get that set up and simplified? So we end up with 4x squared plus x minus 7. Let's look at c, f of h of 2. If we write that in our preferred form, we can see that h of 2 is the input. Well, h of 2, that's a value. I can plug in 2 for x, evaluate h of 2, and then plug that in for f. So when we have compositions like this, we're going to always do the inside function first. So we'll determine what h of 2 is. And then once we determine that, we can plug that into the outside function f. So let's give it a try. h of 2. Well, h is up here, x minus 5. So I'm going to input 2 because it's replacing my x. So replacing the x with the 2, I get 2 minus 5, which is just negative 3. Well, since h of 2 equals negative 3, I can now take that and input that value into my f. If I input negative 3 into f, I'm going to replace both my x's in f of x with negative 3. So 4 times negative 3 squared plus negative 3 minus 2. Let's evaluate that f of h of 2 equals negative 41. Whew. Why don't you give d a try? h of f of 2. Remember, inside function first, then evaluate it in the outside function. For d, h of f of 2, I got my final answer as 11. Check your work. Let's take this to the next level in six. We've got two new functions, and the first problem we want to do, f of h of a. h of a. That shouldn't be a problem. Let's look. The input function is h of a, so we need to figure out what h of a is first. Well, to figure out h of a, I just need to replace x with a. h of a is just 3a plus 2, so now that is my input into f. Okay, well, I just need to replace my x with 3a plus 2. Well, check it out. I've got 3a plus 2 quantity squared minus 5. I think you can simplify it from here, but be careful. Squared, expand. So I know that f of h of a is just 9a squared plus 12a minus 1. All right, let's check out this last one. I rewrote my functions just so that they appear with the problem, but f of f of negative one. f of f, oh, let's rewrite this in our preferred form. Okay, so I can see the input is gonna be the function f of negative one, so I could evaluate that. So let's evaluate the input first, f of negative one. Okay, so I get negative four. So then I'm just gonna input that into my outside function, which is f again, no big deal. So f of negative four. Looks like we get 11. So f of f of negative one is just 11. Mm -hmm.